everybody, welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is Roscoe, our eight month old multi poo puppy. Today we're going to be sharing with you the list of everything you need before you bring home your multi poo puppy. Also, all the products I mentioned in this video will be linked down in the description if you're interested. So the first thing on this list is food. First check with your breeder or the shelter or wherever you're getting your puppy to see what kind of food your puppy has been eating. It's a good idea to buy that brand of food because that's what your puppy has been used to. If you're already set on a certain brand of food, just make sure to buy the original brand and then gradually mix the two together until your puppy's used to it. We use Wellness for Puppy. That's the kind of food our breeder used and that's why we're feeding it to Roscoe. So the next thing on the list is treats. So there are two different types of treats you wanna have on hand. The first being the kind of treat used as a quick reward that you can just grab whenever. For this type of treat, we like to use Wellness treats and we also like to use Buddy Biscuits. And the second being a higher reward such as deli meat or chicken that you use during highly engaged training sessions. Those are the two meats that we use for Roscoe and he really likes them. It helps us to get results faster and his motivation goes way up when we use those highly desired rewards. The next thing on the list is food dishes. These are the food dishes we use. They're just small stainless steel dishes and they work really well. They fit the appropriate amount of food that Roscoe usually eats in a day. They're pretty standard and they work just fine. You could also get ceramic or plastic bowls, although you should probably avoid plastic because your puppy might chew on it. We just really prefer stainless steel. The next necessity is a crate. A crate is a great thing to have because it is a great place for your puppy to sleep at night, as well as it's a great tool that you can use when you're leaving your dog alone. A crate also helps with potty training because dogs tend not to go in places they sleep. We use a wire crate. It provides great ventilation and Roscoe can easily see out of it. At night we put a blanket over the top of the crate and this just helps to create a nice calming darker atmosphere that Roscoe associates with nighttime. The crate that we have also comes with a divider so when Roscoe is smaller we put in the divider so it appropriately fit his size. And as he grew bigger we just adjusted the divider accordingly. Also I'll put the size of the crate right here in case you're interested. Another thing you can get for your crate is a little crate mat like this one. Roscoe did kind of chew this a bit when he was younger, but he's kind of outgrown that. If your puppy loves to chew, you could just use a towel or something that's not too valuable that you don't want to get ruined. But do make sure you have something at the bottom of your crate so it's not just hard and uncomfortable. You also want to make sure that you have a playpen or a gate, especially when your puppy's really young. The gate can help block off any areas you don't want your puppy to get into. And the playpen will confine your puppy when you can't supervise him or when he needs to be in an environment that you know he's not going to get into trouble. When Roscoe was younger, we used the playpen a ton, and now we don't use it as much, but it was a great thing to have, and I'd say it's a necessity. The next thing you'll need is a collar, like this one. I'll put the size of this collar right here, but we've had this collar ever since we got Roscoe, and it fits him really well. It's probably the smallest size they have. You just want to make sure that you have wiggle room underneath the collar, that it's not choking your dog, that you can comfortably put two fingers between his neck and the collar. A harness is also another great thing to have. So when you have your dog on leash for training or taking him for a walk, it's better to have a harness than to use the collar. This way it doesn't choke your dog's neck and it's just way more comfortable for them. This is the collar that we have. Again, we've had this since Roscoe was a little puppy and it's worked so well. So this is the size of it. To go with this theme, you also want to have a good leash. You might have noticed already, but this pattern matches the harness and the collar. We just wanted to have a little theme going on there. This is four feet long. You could also get a six foot long one. We like to use the shorter leash on walks or when we want Roscoe right by us. We also have this longer nylon leash. I'm not even sure how long this thing is. It's really long though. We use this when Roscoe's outside, so we have something longer to grab onto. And when we're training him, we also like to use this leash. Sometimes the four foot one is just not long enough. It's great to have more than one leash so you have different options. Moving on, you also wanna have some doggy bags. These don't really need much explaining, but these are the ones that we use. This stuff is a necessity, no matter what you may think. So whenever your dog soils or urinates on the rug, you can just spray some of this stuff. It will get rid of all the odors. It prevents your dog from going in the same spot twice because of the already existing scent. It just helps a lot with house training. You'll need shampoo for when your dog takes a bath. We use Trapiclean Gentle Coconut. Hopefully that's how you say it. It has very few ingredients, it smells great, and it's worked really well for us. So I'll let you in on a little secret. We haven't actually brushed Roscoe's teeth yet, and he's already eight months old. We should probably get on that. But yes, a toothbrush and toothpaste, those are great things to have for your dog. I'm no expert, I have no idea how often you're supposed to do this, but two things that you should probably have on hand. If you didn't already know, multi-poos need to be groomed, 
and brushed pretty often. So we have a basket of grooming supplies here. Here we have some combs. This is the first comb we ever got and it works really well on Roscoe's fur. Personally, I prefer this comb that we have. It came in a grooming kit that we purchased. On one end, the teeth are closer together and on one end, the teeth are further apart. I just prefer how this one goes through his hair better. We also have this little comb type thing. I'm not sure what it's technically called, sorry, but it's for helping getting out mats in your dog's hair. It does help and it's a great tool. Roscoe does have some mats and we've used it and it has helped to get them out. As I mentioned before, we also purchased a grooming kit because we like to groom Roscoe ourselves. These were all the tools included in the kit. I'm just going to show them one by one. This shaver also comes with a little extension that you can put on it so when you're grooming, only a certain length of hair comes off. This just helps a ton for things to be not uneven. It looks way more polished when we use this thing. You'll also need some nail clippers. These are the nail clippers that we use. This little thing just pops off and then they're open. This is probably Roscoe's worst enemy. He absolutely hates getting his nails clipped. No matter how hard we try, it's always a battle. So make sure to introduce this thing early on so your dog gets used to getting their toenails clipped. Funny story, this was actually my stuffed animals dog bed when I was little. Little did I know that Christmas morning that this bed would be perfect for my future puppy. This was actually just lying around the house one day and Roscoe found it and curled up and went to sleep in it. We thought it was just so cute. So now I think he's claimed it as his own bed. It's the perfect little place for him to curl up in the corner and just take a snooze. You should probably wait until your dog's older to get a dog bed because when they're really little, they just love to chew. Your dog will probably just tear it to shreds and then you would have to go buy another dog bed, which is kind of a pain. Just wait until your dog has outgrown that initial chewing phase. A dog bed works great otherwise. So the last thing on this list is probably everyone's favorite thing to buy for their dog, and that is dog toys. Make sure not to buy all of one thing. Have a variety of different toys. Roscoe loves to chew on this little rope and play tug of war. It's great for his teeth and he has gnawed on it so much. Roscoe adores big balls. This ball, when he was really little, like he was barking at this thing. He was just so involved with it. He just tried to get the little ball inside. It also squeaks. This isn't my favorite ball to play fetch with because it's kind of big and wonky, but it's a great ball for when Roscoe just wants to play on his own. This is also a fun ball that we have. It's kind of webbed and it's great for Roscoe to chew on and grab with his teeth. I really like playing fetch with this ball. It's one of my favorites. Then we have the classic tennis ball. We also have a little baby version of the ball that we used when Roscoe was littler, but now these balls are so small that he could probably even swallow them, so they're not the best, but they do squeak. That got your attention, huh? This is our most frequently used outdoor toy, a Frisbee. We use it constantly and Roscoe really loves it. Now I'm not sure if this classifies as a toy necessarily, but it's a bully stick. It's more of a chew, it's rawhide. We save this for really special instances when Roscoe's in his crate or we're grooming him. We don't just give this to him whenever because he absolutely loves it. He'll chew this thing for hours straight. So the last thing that I would highly recommend is a Kong. You should definitely get one of these for your dog. This one is a bit small. It was more for when he was younger, but it still works now. Anyways, the Kong allows you to fill it inside with treats. We like to use peanut butter and then freeze it. It's a great tool for when we leave him inside his crate on his own because then he just has something to keep his mind off being alone. Also, multi-poos are notorious for separation anxiety, so that makes it so much more of a necessity. So that concludes the list. If you'd like to see more multi-poo content, make sure to subscribe down below, and if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to check out our video about the top 10 reasons why you should get a multi-poo if you still haven't made up your mind. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye!